Well, uh, the, the economy has been stagnating now for 18 months, two years, but I am expecting it to begin to recover quite slowly and gradually over the next year. And that's what the IMF and, and other main forecasters expect too. Well, the financial system is still, still adjusting, is the truth. Um, it uh, has been under pressure from the markets and from the regulators to build up its capital, reduce its leverage, the amount of borrowing it has in relation to that capital, and that process isn't over. Um, and as a result, it's been squeezing lending. And that is still going on. What the government and the Bank of England announced last month were new steps to ease the credit constraints and to provide cheap funding to the banks, and I hope that that works. Well, what they're talking about now is slightly different from, from QE. On QE itself, the bank remains convinced that it saved us from a, a much worse fate. Um, I think it must have had some effect. I mean, huge amounts of money have been given to investment institutions, and they've had to buy something with it. So I would agree it's had some effect. Um, but it hasn't had enough effect on its own. And in, in the economist speak, we've been in a liquidity trap where pushing more money in doesn't cause more to be spent at the other end, which is why we need these more unconventional measures. Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the, pro the reforms that are being proposed now will make it easier to manage down a, 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 a failing bank. But uh, right at the moment, uh, I don't think anyone's in any doubt that if any of our big banks got into trouble, the government would step in and buy them. Um, and that's true not just in the UK, but, but, but in most developed countries. I think it's very dismaying news that, um, uh, that, that, that Barclays and, of course, other banks um, had been uh, trying to fiddle the LIBOR rate it is quite obscure, but it goes to the culture of that part of the banking industry, and we clearly need a lot of reform. I think we haven't heard half the story yet. Barclays was the first bank to, um, to settle, but actually a lot of these stories don't make sense unless they were acting or their traders were acting in concert with other banks. So I think we've got a lot more to come. If you look at the charts, you can see quite clearly that the last years of, um, uh, of the Brown Chancellorship, we, we, we allowed public spending to run away. And so when the crisis came, it hit us with the government already borrowing very heavily. And we've got to, we've got to rein back from that. That's going to be extremely painful. And it's going to require some big choices to be made by government around the limits of social care, the limits of free health care, and so on over the next, I would guess, four to five years. In due course, there's no reason why we can't get back onto a sustainable path of spending and, and taxing at about 40% of GDP. But we're way off that path at the moment. Yes, I mean, uh, we saw this with um, our own banking system. Once confidence has ebbed away, you need a credible guarantee, and the European periphery needs a credible collective guarantee uh, from the euro area as a whole. What we've seen over the last two years is a desperate attempt to limit that. Um, just the last council, I thought, was a big step forward, where in effect, the euro area as a whole has now said it, it will stand behind the banking sector, and therefore the national governments are relieved of that uh, obligation.